1975's Terror of Mechagodzilla is the lowest attended Godzilla film of all time, and served as the finale to both Godzilla's Showa era set of films and the kaiju filmmaking efforts of genre legend Ashiro Honda. Personally speaking, Terror of Mechagodzilla is not a favorite of mine, and I stand by our original review of the film. However, thanks to attending a recent screening of the movie courtesy of the Alamo Draft House here in Phoenix, Arizona, I found myself with TOMG on the mind. So, for your viewing pleasure, here are four fun facts that you may or may not know about Terror of Mecha Godzilla. Number one, Titans are red, robots are blue, sorta. Terror of Mecha Godzilla features the debut of Titanosaurus, a prehistoric marine reptile with a bright red paint job that makes the Cretaceous creature seriously pop amidst an otherwise dull cinematic color palette. This was a deliberate choice made by the film's special effects director, Teruyoshi Nakano, who did his best to make Godzilla's enemy monsters contrast against Godzilla's gray skin tone. But the red was not a randomly chosen tint, but instead a scientifically inspired decision. According to an interview with Nakano that appeared in Godzilla Toho special effects VIP interview collection, he had just read a paper printed in Nature, a British science magazine that's been ongoing since 1869, that theorized that dinosaurs were, in fact, red. The publication theorized that because the thunder lizards lived in high-temperature environments, like colorful tropical animals, they were likely a color with a low heat absorption rate, like red, and not a shade darker. While Mechagodzilla remains largely unchanged in both his 1974 and 1975 appearances, there are some noticeable differences, including the color of his space titanium armor. In the Mechanical Monsters 1974 debut, Teruyoshi Nakano pointed out that Mechagodzilla isn't actually a monochromatic silver, but is in fact a rainbow color. When the camera is close, the body is colored with rainbow colors. The lighting makes good use of backlighting and the resulting halos and reflections create the rainbow colors, especially when Mechagodzilla jumps in the air, gives off a nice glow. This colorful sheen was ditched for Terror of Mechagodzilla, however, when the suit was first painted silver, followed by a spray of clear paint mixed with a small amount of black and navy blue in order to enhance the metallic feel. Number 2. The Mifunes Don't Smile Tomoko Ai, the leading lady who played the cyborg girl Katsura Mifune, was first discovered by a modeling agency when she was 18, walking the streets of Roppongi in Tokyo. By 1974, she was working as an actress and had a few short stints in Ultraman Leo before becoming a series regular. At the time of the Terror of Mechagodzilla auditions, Ai was in the middle of filming Leo when her manager, apparently dead set on getting her in the next Godzilla feature, rushed to the Ultraman set telling her they didn't have much time and she ought to get over to that audition right now. Having no time to change, I rushed to the audition still in her Ultraman Leo costume. Leo was filmed on the Toho studio lot, but I still arrived to the audition out of breath and drenched in sweat, the very last actress to interview for the day. She apologized to both producer Kenji Tokoro and director Ashiro Honda, whom she recalls as being present, for arriving to the interview dressed like she was. And it was apparently a very long time after that before she finally heard back from them that she got the role. While in later years, Ai realizes the importance of the role of Katsura in her career, she says that she was pretty carefree and just taking it easy at the time of filming. She credits the easygoing atmosphere to director Ashiro Honda, who she describes as being very kind and taught her how to put her heart into each scene. You're a cyborg, so don't laugh at all, Honda would instruct her. Tomoko Ai spent most of her time filming with Akihito Horata, a genre veteran who first appeared as Dr. Serizawa in the original Godzilla. This time, he was playing the role of Japanese Colonel Sanders, or I mean, sorry, Dr. Mafune, Katsura's mad scientist father. To make him look 30 years his senior, Harada was bogged down with wigs, fake beards, and makeup, which made him unable to move his face. You can't smile because you're a cyborg, Harada told I, but I can't smile either because of this makeup. Number 3. Titanosaurus is a girl? Yokiko Takeyama got the gig of being Terror of Mechagodzilla's screenwriter after winning a contest and is so far the only female screenwriter to get a solo writing credit in a Godzilla film. In a time when most female writers wrote family dramas, Takeyama was excited at the notion of writing a tokusatsu film. It also made her father, famous Japanese painter Tatsuo Takeyama, very happy as he was both a huge movie and tokusatsu buff who would take his daughter to see Toho's science fiction spectacles when she was a child. Producer Tanaka told Takeyama to write the screenplay she wanted, and so, even though Godzilla had since become more kid-oriented, 
Takayama wrote the film with the early incarnation of Godzilla in mind, a movie aimed for an adult audience that put a heavy emphasis on the human drama. Honda helped improve the flow of subsequent drafts, omitting heavy exposition and balancing the human drama and monster action. He eventually invited Takayama to come to Toho Studios. There, she was shown the rushes of the film, and seeing the actors speak the lines she had written excited the young writer. Eventually, she came face to face with the completed creation of Titanosaurus, and all of terror of Mechagodzilla's staff said it looked just like her. When you put it that way, it's true, we look alike. She laughed in an interview that appeared in Godzilla Champion Matsuri Perfection, also noting that at the time of terror of Mechagodzilla, she was very thin, much like the long-necked crimson kaiju. Also, the moment I saw the costume, I thought, oh, it's a female. Titanosaurus? A female? Why not? The gender of kaiju is often subjective in these films. Godzilla suit actors have stated in the past that their performance of the Kaiju King switches genders depending on the movie they're in. Why should any other kaiju, such as Titanosaurus, really be any different? Having said that though, who knows how far the idea of Titanosaurus being a female really extended on the creative level. Suit actor Tatsumi Nikamoto, who suited up as Ultraman Leo before he took on his first monster role as Titanosaurus, said he was instructed to give the monster weight and went to the zoo to study the movements of elephants in order to find inspiration for his portrayal of the dinosaur. I couldn't find any specific mention of any feminine characteristics purposely being implemented on the performance level, but really, who's to say one way or another? Just something fun to think about. Number four, back to basics. 1974's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla was originally supposed to be the end of the Showa-era Godzilla series. That is, according to special effects director Teruyoshi Nakano. But the film's popularity convinced Toho Studios to drag out one more film that would, again, feature the mechanical King of the Monsters. I do remember the higher-ups were talking about going back to basics, Nakano said in an interview that appeared in Godzilla Toho Champion Matsuri Perfection. If you're going to go back to basics, then who better to direct than the original Godzilla director himself, Ashiro Honda? But, according to Nakano, Honda was not Toho's original pick. Nakano admits he doesn't remember who the original choice was, but author Jun LeMay offers two possibilities in his work, The Big Book of Japanese Giant Monsters Volume 1. One being Jun Fukuda, who apparently refused to come back to the franchise after his last directorial stint on Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. The second choice was rumored to be Yoshimitsu Bano, the director of the trippy Godzilla vs. Hedorah, but Bano has apparently denied this as being the case. In the end, Nakano said, it was decided that if we wanted to go back to our roots, it would be Mr. Honda. And by mid-1974, producer Tomoyuki Tanaka asked Ashiro Honda to return to the franchise he had helped create. In the book Ashiro Honda, A Life in Film from Godzilla to Kurosawa, authors Steve Reifel and Ed Gotticheski speculate that Honda's decision to return probably was not an easy one. For one, the film had a measly budget in comparison to the big bucks spent during the 1960s, and there was also the fact that Terror of Mechagodzilla was a sequel to a film headed by one of Honda's former assistants. A Terror of Mechagodzilla staffer, interviewed in Godzilla Toho Champion Matsuri Profession, said Honda seemed to be frustrated with the way Godzilla had been transformed over the years, stating he wanted Terror of Mechagodzilla to be a film that would lead to the rebirth of Godzilla. Maybe that was the case. But Honda seemed to realize that the days of poignant Kaiju Ega had long since drawn to a close. The truth is that Godzilla has transformed from a creature of terror into a hero, Honda said in the pages of Terror of Mechagodzilla's theatrical pamphlet. There are those who say, monsters that are not scary or boring, and others who wish to see monsters that are more comical. However, it is awfully difficult to try to incorporate all of this into one movie. So why did Honda ultimately accept the directing job. Maybe he wanted to pay them back, said Honda's son, Ryuji Honda, in Ashiro Honda, A Life in Film. Or maybe he desired to simply make a film once again. Regardless of the reason, Honda helming the final Showa Godzilla film is symbolically the most appropriate choice that could have been made. If you dug this video, please consider liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to Monstrosities, a vlog of tokusatsu. YouTube makes it incredibly difficult for many content creators, including this channel, to have their content be seen by new audience members and even those who are subscribed. External sharing is a key component for growth, so any help you can give us really, honestly does have a substantial and meaningful impact on how this channel succeeds. 
With that said, thank you so much for your time. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and for Godzilla's sake, please keep watching Tokusatsu for the good of mankind and yourselves. We'll see you soon. Thank you.